Right. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ah. Ah. Graphene. Hello and welcome to Just Have a Think. Yes, this is indeed a graphene molecule. Well, this isn't a graphene molecule, it's a plastic model, but it represents a graphene molecule. Anyway, this is a carbon atom, and this here is a covalent bond, which is something I'll probably refer to a bit later on, so keep that in mind. And this is how you actually make graphene. It's very simple. You take a lump of graphite like that, and using ordinary common or garden household tape, or in this instance, masking tape, so you can see it a bit better, you simply apply the tape to the lump of graphite, making sure that you get it nice and nice and packed down there to get a good adhesion. And once you're happy with that, all you do is simply remove the tape from the graphite, and there you have a pristine layer of graphene. I'm not actually quite sure what you'd do with it after that. That's why I haven't got a Nobel Prize in Physics. These two blokes do though. This is Sir Andre Geim and Sir Konstantin Novoselov. Back in 2004, these two were messing around with pyrolytic graphite at Manchester University, and they found that you could indeed use household adhesive tape to strip a layer of material just a single atom thick from the graphite block. So what makes this graphene stuff so special then? Well, as I've mentioned many times on this channel, I am most certainly not a scientist. So what follows is a layman's attempt at trying to understand some pretty funky science. So if you're doing graphene in science at school or college, then make sure you read the comments in the section below after the video, or better still, maybe go and have a look at a proper science channel just to be on the safe side. Anyway, this is a carbon atom, as I mentioned before, and these atoms are held together by these covalent bonds, which is this gray bit here. Covalent means that each atom shares a pair of electrons. Uh, hang on, I can feel a blackboard coming on. Ah, there it is. So all these atoms are joined together in this hexagon lattice that really is only one atom thick, which if you've got a ruler handy, is 0.35 billionths of a meter, or 0.35 nanometers to use the correct lingo. So a single gram of graphene could cover an area of 2,630 square meters, which is the size of 10 doubles tennis courts. One gram. <coughs> Effectively, graphene is a two-dimensional material, not a three-dimensional material, which means it's the thinnest substance ever made. But because each atom shares a pair of electrons with other atoms via this covalent bond, it makes that bond extremely strong. Actually, even that explanation is apparently too simplistic as well. In reality, there's all sorts of other things going on in here, like electrostatic forces, S, P, Y, P, X orbitals, and sigma bonds, pi bonds, sigma, sigma bonds, and pi, pi bonds. All of that is well over my head and outside the scope of this little video, but you can read all about it at Wikipedia or websites like stackexchange.com. So if you want to delve a little bit more into it, then, you know, knock yourself out. Anyway, all that stuff makes graphene 200 times stronger than steel. A square meter of graphene weighing just 0.0077 grams can support four kilograms. And the magic doesn't stop there. Oh no. Graphene is also harder than diamond, but extremely flexible. It can be stretched by 20%. It's self-healing. In its purest form, it's 97.7% transparent. It's more electrically conductive than copper. It's chemically inert and practically impermeable, and it can be folded and crumpled any way you like, which vastly increases its surface area in a confined space. In fact, short of making you a cup of tea in the morning, there doesn't seem to be much this stuff can't do. There's just been one slight snag, which is that no one has yet managed to manufacture graphene on anything like what you might call an industrial scale. In fact, it's proved to be a very difficult and expensive thing to make in any kind of volume at all. Until fairly recently, that is. Following the very best traditions of the human approach to problem solving during the course of our existence on this planet, it was of course only a matter of time before one group of people decided to see if they could make more graphene more quickly by blowing stuff up. And remarkably enough, 
Turns out they could. Back at the beginning of 2017, a team from Kansas State University took a spark plug from a car and installed it inside a blast-proof chamber. Then they filled the chamber with acetylene gas and oxygen, which is combustible. Then they sealed it all up and put a spark across the plug. Now that did cause a bit of a bang, which I can imagine was jolly exciting. But there was some method in their madness because acetylene and actually ethylene, which would have worked just as well, are composed of hydrogen and carbon. So once all the hydrogen's been used up in the explosion, you are left with carbon that's able to bond with itself. And it does that in a way that forms graphene. Obviously not in nice sheets of material, but certainly in relatively large quantities compared to what's been achieved previously. So at least a step in the right direction. And then there's a team from MIT who announced back in April of 2018 that they've developed a continuous manufacturing process that produces long strips of high quality graphene. The researchers found that they were able to feed the foil continuously through the system, producing high quality graphene at a rate of five centimeters a minute. John Hart is Associate Professor of Mechanical Engineering and Director of the Laboratory of Manufacturing and Productivity at MIT. If this were in a factory, it'd be running 24 seven, Hart says you'd have big spools of foil feeding through like a printing press. So what's all that got to do with climate change and sustainable energy? Well, there's no doubt that if graphene manufacturing can be scaled up and the cost can come tumbling down, which is starting to look entirely feasible, then we may start to get some things going on at a global level that are actually beneficial to humankind. So here are just four ways that graphene could directly contribute towards a better and more sustainable future for all of us. Number one, Concrete. Concrete is now a completely ubiquitous building material used all over the world, but it's the third largest emitter of carbon dioxide after fossil fuel and land use change. For every tonne of cement produced, you get one and a quarter tonnes of CO2 floating up into the atmosphere. So anything that can be done to reduce this has to be a good thing. According to researchers at Exeter University, graphene can double the strength of standard concrete and increase its water resistance by four times. Potentially, that could halve the amount of cement being produced for concrete, with the consequent reduction in CO2 emissions. Exeter University nanoscience and nanotechnology professor Monica Crassian told New Civil Engineer how the technique could reduce carbon emissions from concrete by around 446 kilograms per tonne, calling it a game changer for the construction industry. Crassian said the team's working towards securing a new British standard for the concrete which should be ready for commercialised production by the end of 2019. Number two is clean water. According to the United Nations, water scarcity already affects more than 40% of the global population, and it's a situation that's getting worse as each year passes. Desalination of seawater can produce fresh drinking water, but the process of reverse osmosis that's currently used is extremely expensive and massively energy hungry. Several academic institutions around the world are working on graphene-based filters as an alternative to this costly process. The beauty of graphene is that its structure is tightly packed enough that it can allow water through while filtering out the salt. At the University of Manchester in the UK, Giro Abraham explains the developed membranes are not only useful for desalination, but the atomic scale tunability of the pore size also opens new opportunities to fabricate membranes with on-demand filtration capability of filtering out ions according to their size. MIT researchers have found that water permeability of graphene is many tens of times higher than conventional reverse osmosis membranes. And in a 2018 study, researchers with Australia's Commonwealth Scientific and Industrial Research Organisation, or CSIRO, used a form of graphene called GraphAir to make the seawater drinkable after a single treatment. Researchers from Monash University and the University of Kentucky have developed graphene filters that can filter out anything larger than one nanometer. They say their filters could be used to filter chemicals, viruses or bacteria from a range of liquids. Number three is energy generation. This is where graphene may really excel because so many of its properties, including electrical conductivity, will come in useful in this arena. For a start, graphene can be used to make more versatile solar panels. The best photovoltaic panels available today are about 20 to 25% efficient. But scientists have found that graphene absorbs photons from a wider spectrum of sunlight 
and these absorbed photons produce multiple electrons and that apparently means a potential efficiency of more like 60%. Researchers at MIT have stated the ability to use graphene is making possible truly flexible, low-cost, transparent solar cells that can turn virtually any surface into a source of electrical power. Once you've produced all that lovely electrical energy, of course, you have to use it immediately, or you have to find some way of storing it, which brings us nicely to number four, which is energy storage. There's a great piece about electricity storage at the Skeptical Science website written by Reduna back in 2015. Even back then, Reduna was telling us graphene has already been used to vastly improve the recharge time, reportedly 15 minutes, and increase the capacity by as much as 10 times of lithium batteries, supercapacitors, and supercapacitor battery hybrids. UCLA researchers have developed a new graphene-based material called Holy Graphene, enabling production of a capacitor that has unparalleled energy density, 10 times that of currently available supercapacitors. And in a report published just a couple of weeks ago in January 2019, the website grapheneinfo.com featured another group called Saint-Jean Carbon, who are developing a graphene gel saltwater battery. According to the report, batteries based on this technology should charge faster, run longer, and theoretically may last indefinitely. The project's long-term goal is to have a series of three full production batteries ready for launch in spring of 2020. And graphene's getting some serious backing now. Back in 2013, the European Union set up the Graphene flagship, which aims to be a centre of excellence for the development of graphene and all its various applications. At their website, graphene-flagship.eu, they explain the Graphene flagship is a future and emerging technology flagship by the European Commission. With a budget of 1 billion euros, the Graphene flagship represents a new form of joint coordinated research on an unprecedented scale, forming Europe's biggest ever research initiative. It's a great example of a continent scale initiative aimed at continent scale or even global scale solutions to the challenges we'll face as we go through the 21st century. And it'll almost certainly help with the implementation of the distributed smart electrical grid that's being rolled out across the European mainland and that's already revolutionising the way that energy is produced, stored and shared across country borders and time zones. That's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed the programme. If you did, then please hit the like button and share the link with your friends. Subscribing to the channel is absolutely free and it shows your support for what we're trying to do here at Just Have A Think. And you can do that very simply by clicking on this link here. As ever, thank you very much for watching. Have a great week and remember to just have a think. See you next week.